Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm here visiting Adam today. And if you guys follow the channel, you know I've been going around and testing out different brands and different styles of sawmills so that I can make an informed buying decision, and hopefully it helps you guys in that way too. So Adam has a YouTube channel called Hometown Acres, and he's on my list of about five guys that I go to to learn and watch on YouTube. A lot of great content, but you want to tell them a little bit about what you do here? Yeah, so we started this channel about four years ago. We moved out of the city and bought 44 acres, and pretty much our channel is just about everything that we do here on the property between cutting firewood, sawing uh, lumber, uh, moving dirt with the excavator and the tractor, and just all kinds of homesteading stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. And he's an accountant by trade, and I'm a numbers guy, and so he does a lot of detailed breakdowns on on what really makes sense and what's profitable. And I really, I, I get a lot from your content. Well, it's funny when you said you come to watch me for expertise and learn how to do things. Like I'm an accountant by trade. All of this stuff I've just learned over the last three or four years. So I'm by no means an expert. I never claimed to be an expert, but we've learned a lot over the last few years and we have a lot of fun doing it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load a log up on the mill and get it cut up. And then we're gonna talk about what I notice that stands out that's different about this mill from all the other brands I've used. And then we're gonna get your thoughts as a long time user. Yeah, we've had this mill for probably about two years now, so I can give you a pretty good idea. And if I didn't say it at the beginning, the brand is Easy Boardwalk, and it is the 40, so it can cut 40 inch logs with like a 30 some inch throat on it. It's got a 32 inch throat, and what that means is if you're milling dimensional lumber, by the time you take the slabs off of all four sides, you can realistically mill a 40 inch log, but if you're doing live edge slabs, you can only do a 32 inch log. All right, so let's get it loaded up and get to work. Yep. All right, he's got that warmed up. He's gonna go grab a log. I'm saying all these nice things about Adam, and I do think you ought to go check his channel out. It's great content, but this guy invited me out here, show up and it's snowing. It's 60 degrees where I live. He could have at least got us some nicer weather. This mill really does have some unique features that I haven't seen on any of the other sawmills I tested. So if you're in the market, make sure to stick around for the full review at the end of the video. First thing I noticed is these log stops are different than anything I've seen before. You, you have a log stop on each side connected. I mean, this is just to retain the log or? Yep. Yeah, and they, uh, I've seen other ones, you have multiple different log stops. So you have a short one and a tall one for to adjust for the different size logs. On this one, you just pivot it down. So if you've got a short log, you just drop it down. If you've got a tall one, flip it up. Um, I really like that. I think that's a pretty handy feature. And I know other ones, they've got a turnbuckle to tighten it down and, and pinch against the log. This one here, when you roll it into place, bring this over and it's got a, a clamp on it and it locks in just like that. All right, that's a nice setup, really. Now, does this have, it does right here, so you've got a jack under this that lets you level a log if your pith is off-centered or something? Correct, that is, I, I don't think that comes standard on it, but yeah, you uh, lock the jack in and now you can raise and lower the log. The one thing that's important to note with that is you always have to have the small end on this side because you can raise it up, but you can't drop it down. So small end on this side, and if you need to adjust to center the log, you use the jack to raise it up. But this one's pretty straight, and we probably won't have to do anything like that. Yeah. That's a pretty good setup right there. Are you going to run coolant in it today, lubricant for the blade? Yeah, so uh, we used to run diesel fuel, and I know there's other YouTubers that run diesel. The problem with diesel fuel I found is if you don't, if you've got it putting out too much, it's going to lube the blade really well, but your gloves and the lumber and everything is going to smell like an oil refinery. Uh, and if you don't use enough, the blade gets hot and your, the blade or the, the lifespan of the blades doesn't last as long. So we ended up switching to in the summertime water and Dawn dish soap and in the wintertime water and, you know, windshield washer fluid. So. The water and windshield washer fluid, that's a kind of a, that's a cheap option too. Guys who run a lot, 
are spending money on diesel is a lubricant. Yeah, six dollars a gallon. So you want to show me real quick how you uh, tension the blade? Yeah, that's over on this side over here. So one thing I really like about this mill is you don't need any extra tools down here to tension the blade. I know some you've got to have a ratchet and a torque wrench and all that. This one, it's got a built-in T-handle and you know that you're at the right tension when this uh, washer here is directly underneath that little stick. It's, it's kind of your uh, guide for making sure that the blade tensioner is right. So yeah, about another half a turn. Okay. So right there. So you don't need a torque wrench or anything to measure your, your tension. Nice and simple. I see it's got a Honda engine. Do you know what the horsepower on your engine is? You know what? I don't know. What model is it there? It's a 690. A, it's a GX 690. I'm not sure. It might be 26 horsepower or something. We'll look up the horsepower and I'll put that on the screen. Yeah. I do know that is an upgraded engine. They, I think they offer two or three different models. You can get a, a base level Honda, a mid tier and a, a premium. I think that's the premium engine on this one. A lot of them are nine and 14, but yeah, we'll look it up and see what it yeah. is. Okay. And it, are you electric start? We do have electric start on that as well. All right. So Honda engine with an electric start. That's a, that's a nice engine setup. So are you going to do live edge or I can't? I'm going to do a can. I'm going to cut stuff like that over there. Great. So now what I'll do is I'll come over here and just try to eyeball where I want that first cut to be. 12 inches is about right there. So I think that would be a good first cut. I know Brock didn't drive all the way from Kansas to Pennsylvania to watch me mill the log, so I'm going to let you mill this. I'll coach you through it, though. When I actually came here, I'm not going to tell him, but I came here to tear up a mill. <laughs> well, I just hit the go pedal now. and Yeah. So there, the one thing I really like about this mill is it's all manual. So literally to adjust your throat, undo this key handle and slide this out. Look, it's frozen now. There we go. So it literally is just a piece of square tubing inside another piece of square tubing and it's adjustable. So you set it so that it'll slide through the log without hitting anything. Tighten this back down. And then to adjust the mill up and down, here's your brake. And that's, that's your crank. So just let go of that. Either crank it up or crank it down. So we measured 12 inches. Go ahead and set that to 12 inches right there. You can see right there's your line. And just drop that down to 12 inches. That's unique. I like the way that's set up. Now, crank, just to get a feel for it, crank it up. You have to, so I would stand here and use both hands. So you release the brake and now. Okay, yeah. To turn your blade lube on, it's right here. And then to start the blade, it's this handle right here. And you can see it slides the motor that way to engage the drive belt. So. And I usually, right here's the handle to push. And then I usually put one hand here and one hand here. Okay. There's a, a handbrake there. Yep.
so we'll turn this up on its side, have that up flat against those, so that's perfectly 90. We're making a square cant, not live edge, so we're making our 490, turning at 90 degrees and making each cut. So right now, you're going to measure from your base up to, you're kind of almost eyeballing, right, what the, how big the cant can be. And yeah. you're measuring up to that point, and then you're setting your off your scale based on that number, that measurement. Yep. Yeah, so we'll go over, and basically on the other side, we'll take our tape measure and measure from the bed rail up to where we've got, you know, clean, clean wood to bark, and we'll set the log to that height there. And hopefully when we come through, it'll just make a nice even cut to clear off the, the slab and give us a nice square edge. Once again, we've got the smaller end of the log on this side and the ability to raise and lower this side to center the pith. He's checking right now, taking measurements to see if that's necessary. Six and a half on this side and three and a half on this side. And you're measuring from the base up to the pith? I'm just using uh, a flat straight edge across the bottom to give me a reference point and using that. So like right here, we're three and a half inches. So I need to come up about I'm going to say two inches because as I raise this end, that end will drop. These snow flurries, it's starting to look like sleet. So he's gonna bust out the rest of this log and I'm gonna watch and then we'll kind of give our thoughts on it. Lot to, lot to like about this mill. Sometimes we emphasize that these are what you'd call like a rough cut mill, but this is uniform thickness all the way down. And so is the last piece. Yeah, I mean that's that's borderline veneer. If that if that was hardwood, you could you could mill veneer on this mill. Very nice. I was thinking we could go warm up and <laughs> and give our th closing thoughts on a review of this mill from inside. Yeah, we got caught in a blizzard here trying to mill this log up. All right, so that was a lot of fun <laughs> and it was pretty quick too. It didn't take very long, really. That's one thing I notice when I'm milling is, yeah, there's a lot of lumber in big logs, but there's so much manhandling and it's very time consuming to mill the big logs. Those small logs, not a lot of lumber in them, but easy. You can do it by hand. Just use a little log turner and you can move from log to log to log very quickly. So I'll give my thoughts on it and then let you give a little bit more expert opinion on it. So some of the things I like, and you can get details on this too, but I've seen your explanation on why that head is angled so it's not hitting the bark as much, the direction of blade travel. So the head on it is angled um, very much in the same manner that when you're rocking a chainsaw through a log, um, it just, it's supposed to help pull the, on a chainsaw, help pull the chain through the wood. On the sawmill, it's supposed to help pull the, uh, the blade through the wood. And I don't know if you noticed, but if you have a good sharp uh, um, blade on the sawmill, which that blade is pretty new, I mean, you can literally push that through the wood with two fingers. It just coasts right through the wood. And that is one thing I immediately noticed that pushed really easy and it always does make a difference. There's a few different factors. One being the size of the log and the species of wood made that a little easier, but then also 
you know how good your bearings and how just how smooth the the track slides it was very easy to push for being the widest mill that i've ever used yeah now the other thing you were started to talk about was um with how the the blade feeds on the right side of the mill and you're always turning the log to the log stops on the right side of the mill the only cut that you make with the blade is uh, going that's going through the bark is your very first cut once you make that first cut and flip the log once now that leading edge of the blade is always going to be going through a fresh clean cut and not through dirty bark which is going to help lengthen the life of the blades yeah and that's the other thing from any other mill that i've ran that felt left-handed like i was on the opposite side and the stops were on the opposite side and that's what you're accomplishing there yeah usually the log stops are on the left side of most other mills whereas on the easy boardwalk they're on the right side of the mill and that's another takeaway I have from running this. What it felt like was that it's kind of engineered from the ground up mm -hmm. by a group of individuals or, you know, the, the founder of the company, rather than being like a recreation of the same mill over and over again. It, to me, it feels like it was made in somebody's garage, um, which, you know, you can view that as a bad thing. Yeah, Woodmiser has all the computerized digital microchips, all that stuff. Um, what I like about it is very simple. I'm, I'm not super mechanically inclined. Like I said, I'm an accountant, but I can wrap my head around how that sawmill works. If anything were to break on it, I could go to the auto parts store or whatever, get new bearings, anything like that and fix it. So when I first saw this sawmill on the channel, I'm already shopping. I'm thinking about what I want. I see Adams. I'm like, it's blue. I've never seen that before. It seems it's kind of spread out and like, there's not a lot to it. And I thought Adams got himself like a cheap knockoff sawmill like a chinese sawmill and uh i didn't know anything about it and then over time i've kind of learned a little bit more but i want to address that more where it comes from so it's it's made in missouri it's actually made here in the states and like i said it's it, it it's a, they're a very small company i think i talked to them they've got a, a one-year lead time on the mills right now so if you do decide to go with that brand it's going to be a while before you can get it um but they've only got a handful of employees i think he's told me they do 120 to 150 mils a year is what they can produce with the manpower that they have. But yeah, it's a it's a small American made business. And like I said, it, it looks like it's designed out of somebody's garage. And it's that's what I like about it. Some people that may be a turnoff, but I like that about it. And they're made in Missouri, which is where I grew up. And I now live just across the Kansas line. But the closer to home you get, the more I consider that a selling feature. Yeah. Let's talk about some other functionality things. One, I thought I had heard that Woodland Mills was one of the one of the few sawmills that automatically turns on your lubricant whenever the blade's turning. Mm -hmm. But I saw there's a very simple mechanical setup that isn't likely to fail in any way that makes this mill do the same thing. Yeah, when you hit the lever on the sawmill to engage the engine and the blade, um, that lever is also tied to another lever, which switches a valve on your blade lube that opens that valve and allows blade lube to, to trickle onto the blade. So positives, I noticed simplicity of design, probably ease of maintenance. It's got a good strong Honda engine on it. A lot of things to like, but none of that would be probably the, I like all those things, but probably what would lead me to buy this is that wider cutting head Typically what I see in sawmills is if you want to get into something affordable, you're going to have a very narrow width of cut. And as you go up to wider cuts, you get into a more premium mill and it starts having a lot of features that add to the cost. And we, we know there's 30, 40, $50,000 sawmills out there. And I don't want to get anywhere in that range. I think if you're in the three to $4,000 range, which is most entry level budget sawmills, your width of cut is 22 inches, right? That mm -hmm. seems to be pretty standard. Um, whereas that one is a, we mentioned before, a 40 inch cut. And I think if you're like me and your number one, pri your top two priorities by a long shot are cost and width of cut, this might be the best bang for your buck. I've been saying that um, Woodland Mills, the HM130 Max, gives you a, a true 30 inch throat at, you know, six to $8,000 range is the cheapest way to get into a wider cut. But this goes way beyond that in cut width and you're going up in price, but it's not double and triple. Right. So I really thought it was a great mill, a uh, lot, lot to like about it. Yeah, and I know you said you wanted to do your, uh, you know, 
half hour review of it and I've got a two year review of it. I've been very happy with it over the last two years. So that's all I can say about it. It's simple to use and we haven't had any problems with it. So that's, that's all we're really looking for. Huh? Yeah. So, all right, well, I really appreciate you having me out. That was a lot of fun. We're gonna do some more content. We're gonna have another video on Adam's channel uh, where we're going into another topic, and then we're gonna do some more videos from my channel here. So make sure to check the rest of those out. Subscribe to Hometown Acres if, if you like Adam. Yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.